everyone. Welcome to Trailer Class. I'm Gandalf James, your host. And it looks like today we're making your life one of my favorites here for Thanksgiving, our special beer can turkey. <clears throat> Good. What we have here is a freshly thawed turkey. As we uh, bought it frozen, left it in the refrigerator over there for about four days, and then we let it sit out here for the rest of the afternoon, suspended in our little thing over the sink, letting it get close to room temperature. Over here is the actual pan that we're going to be using to put in our turkey to catch all its juices and everything while it bakes in the oven. As you can see, I've taken a Mechelin, which is a bunch of just carrots, onions, and celery, and just lined it on the bottom here. One of the things about high altitude cooking, and especially with uh, turkey, is you always hear the common complaint, oh, it's dry, it's dry. So our thing is we're going to combat dryness with the turkey. So we have this and this. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually season the outside of our turkey. So before we put it in our pan, we can make a mess over the sink. We're going to just start salting it up with good old-fashioned turkey seasoning, just like mom used to make. Take your seasonings, rub it in on all sides. You just really want to get the top, a lot of the breast there. As you can see that it has that nice kind of brown, red, orangish coating, kind of like fall leaves. And that way when we bake this guy and we actually pull it out of the oven, it's going to have that nice golden brown look on it. And the skin should be really crisp by the inside. It should be nice and moist. Next we have the key ingredient right here. A big old can of cheap AU or Australian beer. There's only one type of Australian beer that comes in the can like this, and this is the one you're going to want. A nice big one for the turkey. But since those Aussies aren't paying me to advertise, they're just getting told. You'll have to figure it out in the liquor store or mart, wherever you get your beer. Crack it open. And you're going to want to dump a lot of this beer out. Oop. And you're... This beer is actually kind of warm. It's been sitting out. And, oh, we're getting a disaster. So we've emptied out the beer about to about a quarter or a third left of that beer is left inside of this guy. Um, that way, you, when you dump, put it in this the turkey, it's not just going to become a huge wet mess. So you're going to want to get the turkey all nice and angled up right. Take the can and put it in the keister some videos you see on the internet and then quickly quickly take it and put it on there perfect that way we got beer in there it's going to steam out of the hole as this thing bakes and we're going to have ourselves a nice turkey next we got butter right here our seasoning salt and some of that beer that was remaining that got all foamy earlier so we're going to take some of that beer, dump it in with that butter, because beer and butter has always gone to get well together. Take some of the seasoning salt, boom, 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 and we can fix this right up like so. And we mix it, and this is going to be what we inject into the turkey. You can get this at any one of your fellow box stores, do dollar stores, wherever. Use an actual meat injector. Don't use your uh, mom's diabetes uh, insulin. You know, that's just going to end up bad. Your uncle's heroin needle, you don't want to use that either. Because it's just not going to work out for you. So you're going to want something nice and big. And then, it's time for the injection. The doctor is in. This is always one of my favorite things to do is especially dealing with turkeys and meat like that, is when you get to inject stuff into it. See, we're taking this and we're putting it on the sides and going right into those breasts. Because those are the driest part. Everybody complains, the white meat's always dry. Not anymore. Look at that. It's intoxicated with butter and beer. And, eh, and we got one little left. And we're just going to put it up over in there. Mmm. And... There you go. Now we're going to inject this thing later on after it's baked for a couple hours. But right now it's ready to get wrapped up. We can try to take this. We got its little leggies right here. This will also will help keep it moist. 
And look at this bad boy. It's ready to go into the oven. A final thing you do before you put it in the oven is take your tin foil. Some people like to use the, the cooking wrap bag stuff, but I don't like it. I'm old fashioned, so I'll use the cheap tin foil that they provide for us as it gets torn apart, which is fine. We use several layers of tin foil because we get it at the box store. It comes in a nice, really long one, wide one like this, but still, it's cheap, really, really thin. So instead of paying big money and getting, you know, the good stuff, we'll just add a bunch of cheap stuff. And I'm having a problem with this wing right here. That's okay. We'll fix this. If I can fix this. And. Here we go. The oven is set for 375 degrees. We're going to put it in there for about two and a half hours, pull it out, inject it again, check up on it, and leave it in. This will be about a five hour process. This is a 21 pound turkey. Alright, why are turkey baits? I don't know about you, but I don't I like to spend my time while I'm waiting on food to cook by playing this here guitar. Juicy turkey right there. We tempted it out uh, before uh, we pulled it out of the oven. A little secret there, but yeah, it's at a 180 degrees. And of course, these little guys that they always provide never freaking work. I used two different thermometers on this damn thing, but the one thing they give you telling you to work does not work. It's complete crap. It's never worked before. But other than that, look at that. We got nice tight skin on there. It's crispy. We're going to let this sit for 20 minutes before we mukbang it. But if you also look in the bottom of this, all the drippings from the turkey, the beer, and uh, the vegetable sweat has all came this nice little liquid on the bottom that we're going to actually use for gravy later on. Well, we won't, but you could use it for gravy. All right, give us 20 minutes, we're going to mukbang the hell out of this thing. All right. Now that she's cooled down a little while, you can touch her and not get your fingers burnt. So we just... Unwrap the leggies right here using the plastic piece. Really, that way we can spread this girl open like so. Look at that. And take out our beer can. And on to cutting this. Here we are. Nice crispy skin. Look at that. Nice and juicy on the inside there. And there we go. I'll have a bite of this for you. This is really good. Probably one of my best pieces, actually, considering all the stuff that's happened. Anyway, let's go out and check outside what's going in the garage. Well, looks like it's the end of our show today, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll catch you next time. Enjoy the garage door reveal.
Howdy y'all, Cousin Dave here. For your special Thanksgiving edition, we are going to do Centerpiece on the Cheap. That's right. When you are having trailer park Thanksgiving, well, most of the time that involves two to three card tables and a whole mess of folding chairs that you find all over the place. Now, you got all kinds of things to get done. You got to deep fry the turkey, shove the beer can in there, uh, get buckets of mushroom soup and green beans, but you may forget the most important part of Thanksgiving, the centerpiece. Luckily, I got you covered, and you can do it without spending a dime. First of all, this would be our jack-o'-lantern from earlier in the season. Now, at this point, it's starting to look a little ripe, but you dress it up a little bit, and it's going to be just fine, folks. See, we put a little support into it, kind of the Nina the Penta, the Santa Maria, the mass for the, uh, the, the boats that brought over the pilgrims. And then they had their first Thanksgiving. Now, this one's pretty flimsy. I, I don't think that one would hold much of anything. And then you can find a nice turkey carcass. Usually you got something left over, some kind of bones from previous meal. That is going to serve as our main staff for the mast here. And then we decorate this coming on up and over. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at that. It's like a little schooner. And then put all the, the festive leaves around it, decorating for your holiday season. Now, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that appetizing? Wouldn't you love to have that sitting on your table for Thanksgiving at your trailer. Well, for trailer class, I've been Cousin Dave with your centerpiece on the cheap. Yeah, that's, that's fucking gross. <laughs>